Today on Fresh Gear, can't get DSL where you live? We check out Starband, two-way satellite internet access. Find yourself schlepping around a small electronics store worth of cell phones, PDAs, and laptops? We take a look at new cell phone PDA combos that might surprise you in how functional they really are. And we've got the lowdown on some low-end sound cards that deliver a big-end sound. Not to mention MP3 attachments for your cell phone. That's all next on Fresh Gear. Hello and welcome to Fresh Gear. I'm Sumi Das. I'm on top of San Francisco's Mount Sutro, where this 977-foot antenna tower is the Bay Area's communication nerve center, supporting at last count some 170 antennas. That includes 10 TV stations, 5 FM radio stations, police, FBI, not to mention TV microwave antennas, pagers, and of course, cell phones. With a combined 15 million watts of radiated power, it's a wonder that I'm not being roasted out here like a rotisserie chicken. If you live outside of an urban area, out of reach of broadband, whether it's wireless cable or DSL, you're not out of luck when it comes to high-speed internet access. Starband Satellite offers a celestial solution, whether you're downtown or out of town. We had one installed. Here's the dish. Oftentimes, access to the internet can be downright slow, making surfing the net a somewhat cranky experience. But there's hope for those of us who don't live in an area where DSL, cable modem, or other high bandwidth connections are available. If your home has an unobstructed view of the southern sky, you may be a good candidate for Starband. Starband is a satellite system which provides high-speed, two-way internet access to residential neighborhoods. No telephone lines needed. The dish is professionally installed and pointed toward one of three satellites, depending on where you live. It connects via cable to a Starband modem in your home. The Starband modem is a bit large, but plans are in the works to shrink it down. Connecting to the dish is easy enough using the USB connection on your PC. Sorry Mac users, Starband is PC compatible only. Once the system is ready and fired up, the big question becomes, is it fast? Well, yes and no. The surface claims it delivers, on average, 500 kilobits per second downstream and a minimum of 50 kilobits per second upstream. Now, surprisingly, in our initial subjective test, it was more comparable to a 56K modem. Not good news. But when we used a web-based speed utility from DSLReports.com to test it, the results were much better. One of the many tools on DSLReports.com is the speed test. We found our Starband connection averaged out at 403 kilobits per second for download speed and 41 kilobits per second for upload. For comparison, DSL clocked in at 1,204 kilobits per second download speed and 106 kilobits per second upload. But the Starband 400 download speed is quite sufficient, especially when surfing graphic and flash intensive websites like at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art or for viewing streaming video such as on Tech TV's Media Hub or short films on AdamFilms.com. However, sometimes the stream can be sluggish depending on weather conditions or peak usage hours. The upload speed can be more disappointing. When composing a message with the age-old Telnet system, for example, we found our typing didn't always catch up with what was on screen. Online gamers need not apply since high upload speeds are essential. But when compared side by side with a DSL connection, DSL on the right, Starband on the left, the Starband holds its own and is a good alternative when wanting high speed internet access, especially if the options in your area are few. We give Starband three out of five stars. The service costs $70 a month with startup costs for equipment and installation ranging from $400 to $600. It's available now. In addition, you can set your Starband system to receive satellite TV service from Echo Star's DISH network using the same DISH antenna. So you can surf the net and enjoy watching fresh gear. Now, here's a look at what's going on in the world of breaking product news in this week's gear report. 
Handspring has extended its licensing agreement with Palm for its operating system through April 2009. The previous agreement was set to run until 2003, but it didn't require Handspring's exclusivity to One OS. The extended license will ensure that Handspring continues to use Palm OS-based products. Dell has introduced an affordable notebook, the Inspiron 2500. With a standard configuration, it will cost $1,050. The notebook includes a 12-inch TFT display, a 700 megahertz Intel Celeron processor with 64 megs of memory, and a 5 gigabyte hard drive. It'll run Microsoft Windows ME. For more product reviews, tutorials, and all the latest tech news, head to our website at freshgear.com and click on the products and reviews button. There you'll find everything from product reviews of the coolest gadgets, accessories, help, and how-to. Coming up on Fresh Gear, digital phone PDA combos. Do they really function like their individual counterparts, or are they just a compromise? And in this week's pipeline, we look at what some say is a disposable cell phone, like a phone card. When the time is up, you toss it. Fresh Gear continues. first made their appearance, it was in automobiles. Big, bulky boxes that were bolted down to the console between the seats. Then an enterprising company decided to take it out of the car, put it in a case that you could sling over the shoulder. That was called a portable. Gradually, they became smaller and smaller, and eventually they were pared down to this size. It's a digital phone. Now, just when they've become manageable and compact, we've got the third wave, the cell phone PDA combo. For many of us who so. carry both a mobile phone and a PDA, the logical next phone purchase would be a single hybrid device. Fortunately, we found several. First up, the Motorola Accompli. Built around Motorola's Wisdom OS, the Accompli is a PDA and a phone with a QWERTY keyboard interface that's supposed to make entering text a breeze. The keyboard looks small, but it, it actually is quite usable if you have really good strong thumbs. One thing it doesn't have is a touch screen. So navigating things is really, really difficult. The Accompli has a color display and supports the fast General Packet Radio Service, or GPRS. As a plus, it operates in Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America without a problem. It comes with a hands-free headphone, and you can also get an optional speakerphone Hello. attachment. Hey, hi, buddy. How you doing? Good. How about you? Available this summer, it will cost about $600, not including the service agreement. If the Accompli has more function than you need, and if you're looking for some wild colors, the Motorola V100 might be right for you. With a slightly smaller footprint, the V100 also uses a keyboard, includes text messaging services, a WAP browser, games, a voice recorder, and voice dialing capabilities. The V100 is expected to come out this summer for around $250. Now, the Ericsson R380 is packed with features like a WAP browser, voice control, touch screen, and even a melody composer. It's really popular overseas in Asia and Europe. It's got handwriting recognition and it does a lot of the features that you would expect of a PDA. It's $600 without the service plan, so it, are they worth it? Well, if you consider a PDA, it costs you around $400 for a top-end PDA plus the cost of a cell phone, which will run you another $200. It, it's, it's actually not bad. Manufactured by Korea-based LG, the TP3000 is sleek for a PDA phone. Flipping the cover up reveals a crisp graphical display that can be navigated using the integrated stylus. Tapping on the large Palm OS style icons opens up a datebook, contact list, to-do list, sketchpad, and wireless web browser. The PDA also functions while the phone is turned off. It's a relative bargain at $400. But of all the hybrids we saw, our favorite is the Kyocera QCP6035 smartphone. It is a great phone because it has a Palm OS and it's the, the most popular PDA on the planet right now. It's got 8 megs of memory inside, so you can actually add applications. Unfortunately, for the usability, you get some bulk. 
as you can see, it's, it's not the smallest phone out on the market. Surfing the web right now. And with a big screen, it's really easy to surf. It's not like a lot of cell phones these days with web browsers. They're really, really difficult to see. With a screen this size, it sure makes it a lot easier to read. The Kia Sarah smartphone retails for about $500. So if a cell phone PDA is the answer to your commuter juggling act, one of these is certain to lighten your load. If you think cell phone use is reaching critical mass, enter a new wrinkle in the cellular industry. Disposable, chat, and chuck. This is the Telespree. Looks like a kazoo, but it's actually a bona fide working cell phone, albeit without the bells and whistles. As convenient as a big gulp is to the dashboard diner, the disposable cell phone will soon be available at a checkout counter near you. On the heels of the disposable camera, the Telespree is the first foray into the talk and toss category with this completely voice-activated cell phone. Press the one big button, wait a few seconds, and a 21st century automated operator asks, What number, please? Speak into the pointy end of the kazoo-looking gadget, and voila! Dialing 7302. It dials your number. Hey, is that you, Rico? Yeah, what's going on? How's everything out there in Nevada? Now, if you have a heavy accent or you speak a foreign language that the recognition software doesn't understand, you'll be patched through to a real live operator. As to why you'd want one, first, there's only the one-time cost with no monthly service fee and no permanent phone to buy. Just keep one in the car or your purse, or give one to the kids to carry. For emergency use, there's a panic button that automatically calls 911. When you've used up the prepaid time, either toss the whole phone or just the clip-on battery which contains the airtime cartridge. Telespree's grab-and-go will be available in local convenience stores, drug stores, and the like. Expect to pay around $35 for 30 to 60 minutes of talk time. Look for Telespree to be available later this year. You may also want to keep your eye up for another disposable cell from a New Jersey company appropriately called Diceland. They have a paper-like phone in the works about the size of a credit card. They say it'll cost $10 for 30 minutes of talk time. Now, for more information on any of the things that you've seen today on Fresh Gear, head up to our website, www.freshgear.com. Coming up, are low-end sound cards an easy fix for an anemic-sounding set of speakers? And Adobe introduces a pared-down, user-friendly version of their huge Adobe Photoshop. serious gamer or you're into DVD movies with multi-channel audio or surround sound, chances are you're not too excited about the audio from the system that came with your computer. And you're probably not all that jazzed about spending $150 to $250 to upgrade it all. Well, we rounded up some cheaper alternatives to high price high-end sound cards. Here's the low down on the low end. So why do you need a new sound card? Well, there's probably already a sound card in your computer, but if it was there when you bought it, it's probably not very good. Sure, it's okay for simple games and listening to a couple of beeps coming out of your computer system, but if you really want good sound, you're going to need something a little bit more than that. We took a look at three cards that range between $80 and $100, and they give you a lot more benefit. When you're playing a game like this, you have a three-dimensional world, and if you have a normal you know, two-speaker setup, um, you basically get a left and a right. They support five channel, six channel speaker systems. They support digital output for external DVD players and digital input as well. And they also make your CDs sound great and games like this really immersive. In the three-dimensional world, you have a 360-degree sound field. The more uh, positions you can have with sound, the more realistic it's going to be. Sound cards from Philips, Turtle Beach, and Creative are cheap enough not to drain your cash, 
yet deliver the goods for dynamic, digital, multi-channel audio. You can hear things coming up from behind you. You can hear things coming sneaking up on the side. Like the Philips Acoustic Edge, the Creative Sound Blaster Live Series has one jack for front speakers, one for the back speakers, and a separate line in and a mic amp. There's also a MIDI interface and a digital output to connect it up to home theater or digital speaker systems. The Santa Cruz has a nifty fifth jack called the Versa Jack that operates as either a digital out or an analog in or out. Now that's versatility. One other benefit to the cards is that they offload processing power from the central processor. That lets the computer concentrate its juice on graphics and game speed. The Philips Acoustic Edge costs about $100, and because it was the weakest performer in our 3D positional audio test, we give it three out of five stars. At $80, we give the Turtle Beach Santa Cruz the edge over the Philips because of its unique fifth output, the VersaJack. And with that $20 savings, you can go out and buy another DVD or a game. We give it four out of five stars. But the Creative Sound Blaster Live's combination of awesome sound, robust drivers, and an excellent software bundle make it the best of the three. We give this $100 card our highest rating, five out of five stars. And even if you just like listening to MP3s or CD audio, these cards can make a world of difference if you've got a good set of speakers hooked up to it. For image editing software, many pros use Adobe Photoshop. But for most of us who just want to be able to take the red out of Aunt Martha's eyes, Adobe has introduced Photoshop Elements. It has a whole slew of user-friendly features, so now there's no excuse for a bad photo. Adobe's new Photoshop Elements can be called the eager baby brother to Adobe Photoshop. However, don't disregard Elements as the lightweight photo editing software. Instead, it's a solid program with plenty of helpful interface enhancements and features. One new feature is the Hints Palette. When you roll your mouse over an item in the Tools bar, the Hints Palette displays what the tool is with a graphic. For example, paintbrush, pencil, or impressionist brush. And it gives a brief description of what the tool does. If you need more information, click on Help and a detailed description pops up. This is great for beginners or anyone who has trouble keeping all those tools in check. Found along the menu tab are two new tools, the Filters Browser and the Effects Browser. These elements make it easy to apply a variety of filters and effects to your pictures. You can add mosaic tiles or a twirl effect effortlessly because a pre-programmed macro does the work for you. For example, in the Filters drop-down menu, select a filter, in this case we picked Pointalize, drag it over the picture, modify it, click OK, and Elements applies the effect. This feature is addictive, so don't overdo it. With all these features at your fingertips, what doesn't it have? One of the cons for Photoshop Elements is that it doesn't have any advanced web features. Adobe saves that for its high-end package, Adobe Photoshop, which costs $600. Some of the advanced web features are such things as uh, slicing and rollovers. Now, you can find these advanced web features in similar packages as Photoshop Elements, like ULEADS Photo Impact 6. Uh, it uh, comes at the same price, about $99. And finally, for people who refuse to refer to their manuals, Elements has created a recipes palette. There are many common editing activities, such as image cleanup or color correction, that people readily use. The recipes palette has many of these activities outlined as easy to follow, step-by-step -step instructions. It even provides buttons called the Do It For Me button, where that step is, you guessed it, done for you. We give Adobe Elements three out of five stars. It's $99 and is available now. Another new feature that we liked is Photo Merge. It automatically blends together a series of images into one panoramic picture. Very cool for those great vacation shots. Now, if you want to read more about Elements, head up to our website for the full review at freshgear.com.
Welcome back to Fresh Gear. There are so many cool gadgets out there that take up valuable space. One only has two hands and usually only a few pockets to spare. How can you possibly hold on to it all? Luckily, there are two companies out there that are making it possible to listen to MP3 files and use a mobile phone at the same time, all hands-free. For tunes that will let you get up and go, Nokia introduces its new music player. It features a built-in FM radio and digital music player that easily clips onto your shirt, making quite the fashion statement. The hands-free headset not only allows for free-form bebopping, but can connect to a Nokia mobile phone. The built-in microphone is a convenient way to make and receive calls without touching the phone. Hey, John. How are you? Are you fine? With the voice dialing feature of the Nokia phone, you simply say the name of the person you wish to speak to. And if you're in the middle of your favorite melody and you want to take a call, the music player will pause the song until you hang up. The player runs on one AAA battery and can be used with or without the phone. As for the music, there's a 32 megabyte multimedia card which stores AAC and MP3 files and plays up to one hour of music. The Nokia Music Player will be available only in Europe in the fall of this year. Siemens delivers its own fashionable hands-free concept with a mobile MP3 player. Its tiny design, no bigger than a credit card, also clips onto your wardrobe. It's compatible with current Siemens mobile phones and the company promises future models as well. The mobile player plays MP3 files stored onto a 32 megabyte multimedia card. There's also the option to expand to 64 or 128 megs. As with the Nokia player, the built-in mic and headset allow for hands-free conversations and dialing when used with the phone's voice-activated feature. When you're ready to pick up a call, push the PTT or push to talk button and the music goes mute. Unlike the Nokia music player, the Siemens player depends more on the phone. It doesn't run on its own batteries but gets its power from the cell phone. Plus, the phone display has all the song information. The Siemens mobile MP3 player will be available in May 2001. Neither company has figured out pricing for the MP3 clip-ons, but we doubt they'll be above $100. Now, moving on to email. We love to get messages from you. Can you help me find out how I can purchase the Palm, which had the Lonely Planet adapter, which tells you stuff about a city? Well, Frank and Jessica, that's actually fairly easy to find. It's not an adapter, it's an application. And if you have a Palm, you can just download it to your PDA. Just go to www.citysync.com to download it. Now, if you have any questions of your own, send them in. The email address is freshgear at techtv.com. That's all the time we have for today from high atop San Francisco's Mount Sutro, absorbing 15 minutes.